Breaks outside, he's gonna score! McCullough is gonna take this to distance. Throws it toward the end zone, and McCullough! He comes back to Harrington, who has the score! Oh, touchdown! Touchdown, Keenan Howry! Touchdown, Ducks! An 80-yarder! There's a hole, he's gonna score! Baby, he's gone! Oregon football with Mike Bellotti. Day in motion to the right. Kellen back to throw. Steps, looks, throws, wide open. It's Dante Rosarioni. Scores the touchdown! Hey, everyone, and welcome to Oregon football with Mike Bellotti, the Ducks, with the go-ahead and winning points in the Civil War football game. And... Uh, what a day it was. Coach, congratulations. You got it turned around, and you end with three wins, including the one against your rival. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, that was very pleasurable. Great win. Great win for the state of Oregon, for the Oregon fans, and for our kids. We came back and finished the season on a very strong note. Uh, very pleased with our defense yesterday. Kellen Clemens' leadership on offense, uh, special teams. Kenny Washington showing up again. The return of Stephen Moore, a couple picks that really helped us a great deal. And just and Igor Shansky cont continuing to play a dominant role in that defensive line. And we'll talk about it as we go, but still, I mean, talking about a team that had to get it back and, and then really had to stop the run down the stretch, and you're able to do it against Stephen Jackson, one of the best running backs in the country. Well, yeah, and that's not an easy feat. I will tell you what, he is an excellent running back, one of the biggest, strongest backs we have. And they have a potent passing. That was the number one offense, number one defense in our conference. And we did a great job of controlling them, keeping them out of the end zone, and responding. Every time something bad seemingly happened, we either forced them to kick a field goal or we put a drive together on offense and make something happen. How satisfying is it? Just the satisfaction of where you were to where you are today and the heart and the character of this team to come back. It's got to be maybe the most satisfying of your career. Well, it, it's going to rank right up there. I think any time that you see that type of a change in a group of kids and, and for them to regain control, uh, exert some leadership uh, and influence, and, and turn the thing around. And I, I say my coaches and my players are the ones that deserve the credit. Uh, you know, I just point the ship in the right direction. They're doing all the rowing and all the making it happen. But uh, I am very proud of them simply because the way we finished. And I know some people have written us off, but not our kids. Well, you're pretty humble about it. One of the best jobs in your time at Oregon to get the team going and Thank we'll you. have a lot of fun over the next hour looking at the highlights we'll also take a look at Kevin Mitchell but uh, let's get to it first quarter Civil War a lot of emotion Oregon State came into the game very confident coach your team came into this game like you knew something that we didn't know very humble well I, I felt good about our preparation we had been practicing well with the purpose we had been quiet to the press in terms of our expectations it was one of those things that we had a good group of seniors, a very small group of seniors but one that has exerted tremendous influence over this program started out whitehead losing three yards on the play and uh so doesn't start out great he also had an incompletion on first down and then williams here gets it pass completion for 10 yards but the short of the first down so a three and out and uh, maybe the emotion of the game coach and uh, you know just a little flat start we had you know first pass was overthrown slightly and it was very difficult and then we came out a little disjointed on defense really did not respond to a couple challenges early so they move it right down the field Newsom 28 yard gain from Derek Anderson who came to play and then Steven Jackson, who was uh, shut down pretty much most of the day, gets loose on the outside on this little dump out pass. 13 more, little shake and bake, and he goes down right there. And then Jackson for 16, one of his best runs of the day. Yeah, and, and he's a big, strong back. And, and we, again, just really were not in sync on defense that first drive. And I know we, we talked about it here. We have a chance to make some tackles, and, and we just don't, we don't come to play right there. And that was very disconcerting because we had practiced very well. So three minutes into the game, down 7-0. to zero. Any concern at that point that your team a little flat at the start or feeling okay? Well, I, I actually felt okay. But I think, you know, certainly what we need to do is get a first down, get a drive. And, again, Terrence White did a nice job. And our offensive line really got better as a game went along. So this is a great response drive. Clemens for eight yards. Did you work a lot on Kellen with the quarterback draw and running the ball a lot this week? We did. We spent a little bit more time giving him the reps also in that situation. It came to Washington and gave us a spark with his speed to the outside. Ten yard gain out there for Kenny Washington and another Oregon first down. And then Clemens to the outside to Demetrius Williams for five more. And so a good mix uh, run and pass on this uh, this one. Then to Sandy Parker for a first down on third and two. Big play. Yeah, th this again, uh, we continue to mix up the run and the pass and uh, trying to get rid of the ball quickly again because they're a very good defense, but continue to try to run the ball effectively also. That was a great matchup. And then Whitehead for two yards on second and ten. Big play here. Third and eight. 
and he picks it up. What a great play. Yeah, he, Kellen made some great decisions on scrambling, great individual efforts and plays, and you see him, what happened is here, that's a coverage type thing, they're blitzing right there, do a nice job of picking up, but force us out of the pocket, over the top, rolls left, sees everybody's cover, but also sees an open field, runs, and then has the wherewithal to get that first down. Sets up Oregon at the Oregon State 15-yard line, first and 10. Back split, Rosario and Whitehead at the 15, first down. Clemens in motion back to throw. Rolls, still screen pass to Whitehead. He's got a couple of blockers, 10 outside, 5. He's going to score. Touchdown, Terrence Whitehead. Nice job of execution on this play. Set up very well off of the play action look. You can see the motion man coming there, fake there, fake there. Sprinting out over the top. We're able to sink Terrence back. Nice bevy of blockers right there. Nick Stites out in front. Decent block right there. Uh, also, again, picking it up. And Terrence makes a nice move to bounce in and bounce out behind her center. Touchdown, response, 7-7. The place is going nuts. And Coach, I know you talked about it after the game. Special teams might have won this game, and it starts right here. Cherry Matson with a big-time hit. Jerry Madsen had two big-time hits, obviously, and just came down, and, and we decided to squib the kick because the ball was not traveling a great deal, so we wanted to try to disrupt the timing here, get a nice job, and then Jerry comes down and just unblock. We get one move right there, and then boom, flat out splatters it. Big play right there, and you can see how that ball moves on the squibs. I know people up in the stands say, why are they squibbing it? Well, you can see right there how that ball's moving around. Jackson for nothing. Stephen Moore coming up and providing run support. And again, I think when the offense put that drive together, sort of picked up the defense. I heard the defense on the sideline say, come on, we got to do our job now. And it got us excited. They get one on second and 10 for 20 yards to James Newson. Good game for the all Beavers. But then Igor Olshansky introducing himself to Derek Anderson. Jackson in the backfield. Anderson on first down. Play fake. Back to throw. Pressure comes. They got to him. Great job, and as you watch this, Igor's using his hands better. That's the whole thing of developing that pass rush. He can come off right there, push pass. Now he's got him. There's no place for Derek to go. Igor Saxon. It's a good shot there of what it looks like if you're Derek Anderson yeah. <laughs> to see Igor bearing down on you. He had a great day. Nine tackles, four for loss. So the Beavers have a second and 19, and they get it to Jackson. A good play. Kevin Mitchell and Keith Lewis running down. Uh, they did a nice job early on of picking us on that the little routes to the tight end in the back and it was frustrating here Igor again comes off and makes a great play settling in on the screen they get a four yard play there on the underneath pass to us and then Anderson to Farley on third down behind him but he also drops it that's a big drop so a 10 play drive they line up for the field goal and they can't handle it yeah and again it scared me though because he if we had two tackles right here I thought oh no and then luckily again he go to the rescue there was a personal foul right in there and that mess there on the sideline but Oregon's going to get that 15 yards right back so they move it back Doug start with it Kellen Clemens for eight yards and uh, again scrambling out good recognition yeah did a nice job and made people miss the key is he was much more efficient scrambling because he'd make the one guy miss and get positive yardage and there's the late hit right there for 15 yards so Oregon with great field position at the 47 now. Clemens looking for Parker, and Oregon State holding another 10 yards. Yeah, they were being very physical, which we knew that they would be, and we got some great calls, recognition by the officials. And before the game, Coach, you talked so much about special teams, penalties, those kinds of things going to determine the game. They might have. Well, I think they certainly gave us an opportunity to, to negate some of their strength on offense and defense. To the outside. Kenny Washington, a great cutback. Great cutback, great move. And again, we run that play, and, and that's the first time we've been able to do that, reminiscent of some of the backs in the past that can make guys miss in space. And that is the last play of the first quarter. Things going well for the Oregon Ducks right now, and uh, starting to take control of the game, taking the lead. They would never let up. Oregon football with Mike Bellotti. It's going to return right after this, and we'll uh, take a look at Demetrius Williams from this side. And how about Demetrius Williams from this side? Oregon taking the lead and taking control when we return on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti after a great Saturday at Austin Stadium. Love to just continue the celebration on to Sunday. Coach, again, uh, congratulations. Great first quarter. You're um, making a big drive and ready to take control of this game. Well, we got back. The, the start of the game was a little shaky on both sides of the ball, but we put a drive together and, and we're doing a good job on defense. So I think our, our confidence was building.
So a switch ends. Ducks driving deep in Oregon State territory as we start the second quarter. That guy deserves some credit. He stayed warm. So did the Ducks after this Oregon one. Oregon two out of three in third down conversions. Backs out of the eye. Wide out left and right now. And Clemens back to throw. Going to roll a little left. Looks downfield. Throws toward the end zone. Wide open. Cut. Touchdown to Demetrius Williams. That was actually the play we started the game with and was wide open also, but slightly overthrown. This one we hook up. Demetrius, great move. We, they lose him in coverage. Little play action there. You can see it sucks in the backers. Nice protection. Allows Kellen to set his feet, throw the ball. Perfect strike. Touchdown. They had trouble with Demetrius all day. They uh, penalized against him three times, trying to hold him and do things at the line, but he got loose on that one. Demetrius has been doing a great job for us this year. Oregon leads it 14-7. to Confidence at this point sky high, and then they, uh, a great hit and really a scary play. Harvey Witten is just taken out by Jerry Matson, and uh, he goes down. You'll see it again here. It's a very scary play, Coach. The good news is that he's okay, and he came back to the game in his sweats, and he's going to be fine. Uh, it's a great hit. It's a legal hit. It's just, you know, you hate to see something like that happen. Yeah, and it's one of those things that happens in football, and obviously it was very scary. You know, the hit itself, because uh, he was moving his, his arms and legs, etc., and then, then he went unconscious. And as my doctor said, it was more of a concussion, but they did want to check for any type of spinal injury, and I think he's fine. So that's and great. It is great. And both teams praying for him, and uh, great to see him come back, actually walk onto the field in the fourth quarter. Jackson, nothing. Could not run inside, Coach. And then they go to Joe Newton for 13 yards. Again, the tight end, that underneath route, that was pretty much all they had going. We were trying to double the wide receivers and really take James Newsom out of the game, and they took advantage of it by getting the ball to U.S. their tight end, all their tight ends, and their running backs early. And then Steven Jackson for four yards. Still not a whole heck of a lot of running room inside. No, we, we really were conscious of the fact we needed to contain him, keep him, you know, people on him, that type of thing. No gain there, and a holding call as well. Right so moving back, right. Beavers with a second and long. Two to the left. U.S. motions again across the formation of left, and Anderson straight drop back to throw. Pressure comes, they hit him, he's down. Again, primary pressure from Junior Savini coming in. He bust, he beat his man early. See it right there, nice move. Pressures him right into Igor's arms. We have a twist going on the outside. Igor gets a sack. Junior gets a half a pressure. So after a couple of those big plays and they moved into Oregon territory, the defense holds, and Oregon gets the football back for Andy Ludwig. Who, boy, everything changed when Andy Ludwig went to the sideline. I know that's not the reason, but it seems to have better communication with your quarterback. Yeah, I think it's just a combination of things. And I think we got uh, some people up there. Great, again, decision by Kellen there to scramble. But I think putting Coach Zambucas and Ferrino upstairs gave us more uh, experience up there. They could see things a little bit better and, and make better suggestions, and the whole thing has resulted in better offensive pro productivity. Whitehead had 14 yards there, and then Clemens on the quarterback draw for four more, and then third and six looking for Demetrius Williams, and it's a good drive that doesn't really get too far. Just uh, over the top, and uh, disappointing I know for you, Coach, on that play. So you're going to go for the long field goal, and boy, I thought this one had a... Had a good shot at it, had the distance. Yeah, he hit it, you know, and again, it, it's difficult on that one. Just, you know, it was long enough, just slightly off to the right, and that's a 53-yarder. That's not something you're going to make every day. And good effort. Is that what said to him? Yeah, Great I did. Drive. I said you, you had it, you just got to pull a little bit, and the wind was a little interesting. It was blowing the other way today yeah. in Austin, and then it was also sort of coming across at times. Coming out of the northeast off those uh, snowy Coburg Hills, and it was very cold in that stadium. Anderson to Newsom for 18, and then some trickery. Look at the pass by James Newsom. Yeah, that's a heck of a throw. I was surprised. I mean, and we're in a decent position in our coverage. Gain of 32 on the play. The, the big thing is, though, Coach, even after the trickery, they can't punch it in because they cannot run the ball. Jackson stuffed by Junior. That's true. And, and again, I think that was the type of response we needed from our defense. Again, they get a big play. We don't let them get in that end zone. They go underneath again, but it is dropped by Steven Jackson. So Kirk Gillenemi comes in, and he sends it through. 14 to 10, and that is as close as the Beavers would be all day. How much confidence does it give a defense when they get down there and they can only get field goals instead of touchdowns? Well, it's not just the defense. It's the entire football team, because if we can trade touchdowns for field goals, you know you're going to win that battle. Ducks come back with Whitehead for five yards, and then incomplete to Sammy Parker. And then uh, Martinez is going to come in and punt. Freshman did a pretty good job in this game. He did. He responded very well, uh, kicked the ball directionally where we wanted. We had great coverage down the field here. Uh, Justin Andrews, and we get the big turnover there. Uh, Kenny Washington falling on. I know in these situations you love to be able to take advantage of it, and in this one, this situation we weren't able to. Rosario for two, and then Clemens gets sacked, and he gives the ball back to the beat. Yeah, and this was very frustrating. Again, it's a, it's a good call. Ball is out. They get it. 
Um, you know, you want to take advantage field position and momentum wise. And, and again, when you give it back, that negates a great play by the defense. Coach, but it seemed like every time they had an opportunity like this in your territory, your defense pitched a three and out. On this play, they get the sack, and let's take a look at it again. Igor just in his face all day. Yeah, and, and again, I, I don't know if Derek slips right here or just decides that discretion is a better part of Valor to, you know, get down, not take the hit. But you're right, I thought it was tremendous uh, by our defense to come up on the sudden change and keep them from getting any momentum from it. And then this may be a cover sack. It was. Open. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, Devin Long getting in there and again being chased by a host of ducks. And we'll see another look at it. Devin Long coming from the offside. And uh, again, I love these low angle shots because you can see what they're looking at. You see yeah. Derek Anderson head He's not open. I got to run it. Quarterback's eyes were looking back at a one man, one man route backside. We had it covered very well. Got no place else to go. No, no, no. Not this time. And ducks lead it 14 to 10 at the half. They have 16 carries for minus 7 yards. That is the best rushing team in the Pac-10, or was the best rushing team in the Pac-10. You go to halftime, guys excited, defensive line, hey, they got no, minus 7 yards rushing, or was it more of a calm? No, it was, you know, it was very interesting, and uh, it was a sort of a solid decisiveness. We, we knew where we were at. We knew we played well. We knew we could do this. We just had to finish the job. And we talked a lot about that, that we had 30 minutes. You play three and a half minutes in a 30-minute time frame. The actual active plays are about three and a half minutes. And we said three and a half minutes for the rest of your lives. And they will remember it for the rest of their lives. There's no question about that. All right, coming up, Oregon Senior. What a career it's been. Some ups, some downs, but mostly ups as they make their final walk through the Mashofsky Center and through the tunnel at Austin Stadium in front of 58,000 on their feet. Oregon football with Mike Bellotti continues on a celebration Sunday right after this. Welcome back to Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti, everyone. We're at halftime with the Ducks leading at 14 to 10. Now, Saturday Civil War marked the last time 14 Oregon seniors will ever play on the Austin Stadium turf. And you can't really argue with the numbers. While maybe not the winningest group of seniors, they certainly are in the top 5% of classes in the history of Oregon football. Bowl games every single year, two Pac-10 championships, an amazing 12-2 record against the state of California, where many of them are from, and 6-1 and against the city of Los Angeles. Just 10 of those seniors saw significant playing time this year. But they will certainly be missed. And later on, we'll take a walk with one of the, our favorites, Kevin Mitchell, an outstanding career as an Oregon Duck. All right, on to the bowl games. You can probably start making your plans right now for El Paso, Texas, and the Sun Bowl. That's because Washington State cooged it against the Huskies and will likely go to the Holiday Bowl. Although we still haven't heard from the Rose Bowl folks, who will likely lose USC to the Sugar Bowl, but are desperate for a Pac-10 team. With Wazoo's loss, they likely won't get a choice in the matter. So get ready for a Michigan-Texas Rose Bowl the Rose Bowl getting what it deserves for going along with this BCS thing in the first place. Now, here's the information for the Sun Bowl. It will take place on Wednesday, December 31st at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Sun Bowl Stadium, El Paso, Texas. It'll be against the Big Ten team, either Minnesota, Iowa, Michigan State, or perhaps Wisconsin. And, of course, Oregon has had some great games with Wisconsin. All right, that brings us on to the Internet poll. Last week's question, which Civil War victory is the best? 2001. Still fresh in everyone's minds, 50% of you voted on it, 1994 game, which clinched the Rose Bowl berth, 40% of you, and just 7% uh, thought the 72 game, which broke an eight-game losing skid. Any win came in third place. Now on to this week's question. Which team would you like to see the Ducks play in the Sun Bowl game? Iowa, Michigan State, Wisconsin, Minnesota, K-State, or Nebraska? Go to KZI.com, left side of the screen, click on the OSN link, and cast your vote. All right, coming up, third quarter action. How about an Oregon connection for a touchdown in the Civil War? More Oregon football with Mike Pilati is coming up right after this. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone. 107 meetings of the Civil War goes Oregon's way, and uh, Beavers deferred in the first half, so second half action. They get a start with the ball in the third quarter, and uh, fans fired up. Coach, I thought the crowd was great. The crowd did a great job, and there was there was a lot of Beaver fans there, too, more than I would have liked, to tell you the truth. I thought too much orange in the stands. Well, the Beaver fans certainly had a lot of confidence coming into this football game since Oregon State had come off two big wins, but I think they didn't think about Oregon and how well Oregon had been playing lately as well. Anderson incomplete. 
And then uh, Kellen Clemens is going to get a shot right away after a three and out, and they go to work from their own 42 yard line. Seven seconds. Yeah, Ducks are all messed up. Down to four, three and a play clock. Williams to the right now, back to throw. Looking down over the middle. Caught by Tim Day. The big tight end as the first down as he rumbles all the way down to the 39 yard line. Fun to watch him make plays. And again, uh, we were getting, it took us a little time to get lined up. It probably hurt the Beavers in that regard, but Tim does a nice job of finding the hole in the zone. Comes back, Kellen finds him, and then he just rumbles. And what a nice little body move by Kellen to get Siegler to move out of the play there. Yeah, and it, and it hurt us later on because Siegler came back and made a play later in the game on a similar type pass, but nice job. And then good picking his way through the hole by Terrence Whitehead. Whitehead for five yards there, and then Clemens incomplete, but a Oregon State holding again on this play as he can't find a receiver and scrambles away and throws the ball away, but the holding came when he had to scramble. Yeah, they, they do a great job. You try to be very physical with the receivers. And I don't know if that was on Demetrius Williams or Tim Day, but they held one of our receivers. Whitehead for 10 yards to the Oregon State 14. A great move. And then Clemens looking to Williams right here and a pass interference. Yeah, reached out and grabbed his arm. And again, they saw it, caught it. Again, it's something that uh, the Beavers have done very well this year. They deny the pass very well. First down at the 11, complete to Parker for five yards. And then looking for Whitehead on this play, little shovel pass, almost went. Almost went, just, just gets tripped up right there by Seagull. Nice Come play by him. Right, three to the left, empty backfield again. Clemens, back to throw. Now we'll run up the middle, three, two, one, touchdown, Kevin Clemens! Nice job, design quarterback run, great effort by our line, but then great job by Kellen Clemens. You'll see this hole open, and it's just straight ahead. He puts his shoulders down. You see a nice block there by Schneider. Nice job by Dealey Grange, and then boom, nice running form style, break that play. Protecting the football, just wanted it more that time, and got into the end zone. Offensive line, great day. Yeah, Weave, the leader as our, of our line, as we've always talked about, they did a nice job. They really came to play, and three of those kids are Oregon products, so it's very special for them. We had to give them a little sugar. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll Zabuka do doesn't like that. No, no, we can't give him too much sugar. Don't, don't be too sweet. Now. They got a little bit, though, after a Civil War victory. Beavers come back. They get a P.I. in the end zone. They actually called it before the end zone. It would have been on the one-yard line, but it, as it is, it's half the distance. And then Jackson on first down going to lose two, which is a huge play, Coach, because it puts him in a throwing situation. That's exactly right. We do a nice job of stretching this out. Good job by Keith Lewis and the rest of our Ducks. Uh, you know, get him to the sideline, David Martin, etc. Looking for that underneath route again, and U.S. cannot hang on to it and keep his feet, so uh, they're forced to kick it. 28-yard field goal attempt, and getting field goals instead of touchdowns again, it makes it 21-13. They seem to have a little momentum, Coach, at this point. Well, I, I, they did, and, and still, though, having to settle for a field goal and giving us more than a one-touchdown lead is really crucial to this game. Any momentum they had, though, ended after this kick. Again, it right down the middle. A big high bounce. We'll take the bounce inside of the 15, pick up the 17, Washington to the 20, a 30, gets through, into the secondary, 40, 45, 50, down the sideline, 40 and out of bounds. Kenny Washington is playing such great football right now. He is so confident. And as a team, our kickoff return team is doing the things, making the blocks. And again, we settle in. We finally have the same guys playing for about two or three weeks in a row, which is a great double team right there. You see taking the guy to the ground. Nice job here. Him picking his way through. Nice move to get outside. Great block again. And a ground level. You can see again, using his speed, athleticism, straight arms, get to that sideline, add another 10 yards. One of the great plays of the game, really. Absolutely. You know, and just and on those type of uh, squib kicks, you never know how the timing's going to work out, so you really have to hold your blocks longer. Short field now for the Ducks, thanks to Kenny Washington and the kick return team. Whitehead for six yards, third and one, and Whitehead just puts his head down, picks up the first down, 77 yards on 24 carries for Whitehead. Did a nice job. Really ran with good power, and it also made some people miss when he needed to. Clemens for eight yards now to the 16-yard line. And then two small town Oregon guys making one Kellen, of the biggest the plays eye. in the biggest game. Day in motion to the right. Kellen back to throw. Steps, looks, throws, wide open. It's Dante Rosario and he scores the touchdown. Great job of execution. Nice play action pass. <laughs> Boy, that fan is working really hard. But um, as you see this from the ground level, come out, little play fake to the tailback. Nice block by him. Find Dante all alone in the flat. He does the rest. Kellen gets in the ball, and then nice power. Makes one guy miss there, and then carries it into the end zone, breaks the play. Nice job. Knees in the end zone. And a great collision. Yeah, it was. And, and uh, put his head down, got it in the end zone, and 
How about that? Ducks leading at 28 to 13. Beavers needed a lift. Jackson bottled up all day, but he gets outside here. 32 yards. That's a fast guy. Not many teams going to catch him. You guys do. That's a big fast guy. And again, I was disappointed we gave him the edge because we contained him pretty well. But you just you can never relax against him. Anderson to Jackson for three. He, he ought to move on to the NFL. Yeah. Well, I think so. I'm voting for him to go. I'm writing letters for him. Letters of recommendation right now. Anderson. Back and flushed out. He's going to pick up three yards. Not a real mobile quarterback. And uh, how does that affect the defensive line? You don't have to really worry about him getting outside. Well, it, it is an advantage. You know, certainly mobile quarterbacks stress your defense in ways you can never imagine. He threw the ball very well, though, for the most part. Gave the receiver a chance. Nice catch by Newsom, even though he took the hit. 14 yards to the 24. And then Jackson for a loss of three. Jackson had four no gains and three for losses. That just doesn't happen to him. No, and again, it was great play by our defensive front set. Quarter ends 28 to 13, and all the guys putting the four quarter sign up. And, uh, you know, so much has been made about your team not playing well in the last few quarters. But the last five games, except for the Husky game, got to take that out of there, your team's played great football. Well, we have, and, and I think it's been just a recognition that we needed to finish games, and we've talked about it so much, and that really the first half doesn't matter, and we talked about it's not how you start, it's how you finish. What is it? I mean, everybody looks at it and says, boy, what, what's the, how, can you put your finger on it? Is it a hard thing? Is it a character thing, a leadership thing? It's a mental toughness thing. It's, it's not the physical conditioning. It's, it's taking that conditioning and apply it to the situation and then finishing the plays and recognizing that, the end of the game, what happens there, it's like a heavyweight championship fight. You can go for 14 rounds, be behind, but you knock the guy out in the 15th round, be your champion. That's right. And Oregon going to be the champion of this one. Might not have won the fourth quarter, but they played very well and uh, held on against the Oregon State Beavers. All three phases working. Defense bringing it to the Beavers. Next on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. Welcome back, everyone. Let's get on to the fourth quarter highlights. Oregon holding that lead over the Oregon State Beavers in this one and uh, starting with a big third and 13 play. Derek Anderson looking for Steven Jackson for 14 yards to the Oregon 13-yard line. It was a big conversion. Yeah, it was frustrating. They made some plays on second and long, third and long that were frustrating to us. But again, we tried to play bend but don't break defense. And the result, a touchdown to Pat Loney, their first touchdown since the opening drive of the football game. Yeah, nice execution on that play. 28 to 20. Oregon comes back. Clemens looking for Demetrius Williams. Again, a penalty on Oregon State trying to guard Demetrius Williams. Pass interference. Yeah, and got a little contact prior to the ball getting there. And again, nice route by Demetrius. So out to midfield, Terrence Whitehead for a couple of yards. We'll call it two. And then uh, this is really when Oregon State had a little bit of hope. You can see him jumping around the sideline. They get the interception by Siegler on this play. Good play by him. Yeah, he did a very nice job, anticipated the inside move, and, and uh, great play. So they're jumping around, their fans are going crazy, and the defense gets it right back with a three and out. Yeah, and that's huge. A sudden change. We talked about that twice in the game. The defense responded to the sudden change challenge. Starting at the 47, this may be the biggest three and out of the year, and uh, looking to get downfield, nothing going. Huge coverage sack. Great job of coverage and just the intensity to keep coming after him from our defensive line. So he was sacked. Oregon gets the ball right back, sucked the momentum right away from him. And Washington for three. And at this point, I know it's pretty early in the fourth quarter, but the clock's moving. Tick tock, tick tock. Yeah, it is. And, you know, we just got to keep. We, we didn't change what we're doing. This is a tremendous play right here by Kellen Clemens. That's a hot situation. Makes the guy miss and then throws the ball on the money for a huge first down. That was a third and Day seven conversion. Right Kept the, the drive eye. alive and set the stage for this. And Clemens with a stamp. Going to go give it to Terrence Whitehead. Now that's Washington. Get to the outside. He's off to the races. 40, 45, and out of bounds. All the way up to the Oregon State. And a penalty play for a face mask. Yeah, great job by our line, first of all. Kenny, this is a stretch type play, getting to the outside, does a nice job. Great block in there, picks his way through, hits that seam, hits that crease, and is off to the races, and does a nice job here, continuing on, gets a face mask penalty, ends up being a little bit more. I thought it should have been a 15-yarder instead of just a five, but, you know, again, the official may not have a great view of it. Washington seven carries for 61 center, yards, ducks into Beaver territory. Sets, looks, pressure comes, you're going to run away from it to the left, trying to get it outside. He will. 40, 35, 30, out of bounds, up inside of the 25-yard line. Huge play by Kellen here because they bring the house, they pressure us, you see the backer coming there, 
uh, we look back, don't have a good view of it. He comes out over the top and then just out races Swan Cut. And this is a huge play because getting to the outside, using his speed, getting a lot of positive yards, and then getting out of bounds, which I've told him, don't take any hits, get the first down and get out of bounds or get down. 19 yards on the play. Great day of running for Kellen Clemens. And then incomplete to Parker from Terrence Whitehead. Oh! It was there. Yeah, oh yeah, it was there. He just got probably a little bit excited. I think he pulled a Kellen Clemens. He, sort of tried just over he probably That's worked, fine. what, 90% during the, the week? And it didn't work there, but Clemens comes right back looking for the tight end. With time, steps up, throws it. It is caught. Pull away is Tim Day. Day inside the 10, but a penalty flag down. The great thing about that play was that our coach was saying, oh, it's covered, that they had him covered. But you know, covering Tim Day and tackling Tim Day are two different things. So great execution here. Hit him right there. Can't get the big fella down. He does that, breaks that tackle. Now he's off and rambling. Again, one more, two more tackles. Takes a lot of people to get him down. Well, look at the body. Body's flying everywhere. Mitch Mewson getting knocked down by big Tim Day. And uh, then Whitehead for three yards on this play. And this could have been the knockout punch, Coach. I know you want touchdowns here. Oregon State's talked a lot about only getting field goals. We had a couple drives as well where you only got field goals. Absolutely. And here we just, just overthrow Tim Day in the end zone. Unfortunate. Uh, another attempt here coming back at it. And just don't get enough push. To, uh, give credit to the Oregon State defense here for holding us out, forcing us to kick the field goal. So you have to kick it. Can't quite get the knockout punch, but still make it a two-possession game. 11 plays, 86 yards, all tracing back to that big third and nine, by the way, from Clemens to Sandy Parker. Absolutely. Huge play. Watch the ball. Look at the squib. Imagine trying to catch that thing. Does a good job picking it up, and uh, they fumble it, though. Carrying it like a loaf of bread, and it comes yeah. out. It rolls right to a guy laying on the ground. Yeah. yeah. I knew the ball was coming out. I had a great vantage point from the sideline. I was yelling, ball's out, ball's out, and we just couldn't quite come up with it. They come back, though, and Anderson incomplete on this play, and, and uh, drop pass by James Newsom rare. But then sooner or later, you kind of felt like something like this was going to happen. Throw the ball. A lot of time down the middle of the field. It is intercepted by Stephen Moore. Moore at the 50. Running right. 45. Looking for help. Going to go back and then go down at the 47 yard line. I'm not sure what that sit down move was, but it's tremendous coverage. We've been bracketing, trying to double cover the receivers all day long. Stephen sort of laid off, saw the pass, and then jumps in front right at the end. Great job of coming off his man, seeing the route develop. Makes a nice, and I actually thought he could have run this a lot farther. We had a pretty good uh, lineup of, uh, of blockers, but we did a nice job of just blocking above the waist. He decided, why risk another turnover, sit down, get the ball back to the offense. And how about Stevens' comeback? I mean, come back from injury and have a game like he did. He did a great job. I think he had six tackles, two interceptions, and a pass deflection. Whitehead for two on first down, and then Clemens incomplete on this play. They were offsetting personal foul penalties on this play and trying to get it down the field just too much, and that flag came out, but there were some other just Actually, off we, we were in motion, unfortunately. Their, theirs was a holding penalty, and I was mad at our guys, because had we not, we'd have got it first down. Third and seven, then. Clemens incomplete to Parker, so Paul Martinez comes in. He punts it 41 yards, and it's going to be down to the three-yard line. Sammy Parker just hanging out down there, having a sandwich. Yeah, tremendous a punt. Nice job by Sammy. as a red zone duck, and perfect punt. Nice job by Paul. So Oregon didn't score after that interception, so why not just go ahead and try it again? Under, back to throw off the play fake. Down to the flat. Intercepted by Stephen Moore. He's down at the eight-yard line. Great job again by our entire defense. Nice pressure. We respond to the ball in the air. You see this on the drop back little play action. Try to get pressure. Devin Long in his face. Throws the ball right there by David Martin. And then again, Stevie Moore, person on the spot, gets that ball. So now you've got first and goal starting at the eight-yard line. Again, I know you'd love to get a touchdown here, but getting some points is huge in this situation. And going to give the ball to Terrence Whitehead. Going to pick up three yards. A workmanlike day for Terrence. Yeah, Terrence did a nice job. Thought he could have got through that one. We really wanted to punch this one in, to be honest with you. And tried some things. Uh, got maybe a little greedy here in this regard. Get that ball knocked down. Tipped at the line. Was looking for Sammy Parker. And so Jared Siegel comes back in, and he boots it through from 22 yards. It's 34 now to 20, and they need two touchdowns to get it tied up. Yeah, the, the two-touchdown lead became important. An 11-point lead was very important also. So each of those situations, whenever you're hit by more than a touchdown, again, we knew it was at least a three-score ball game. Still thir uh, three and a half minutes to go. Beavers have all their timeouts. Anderson to Haas was incomplete, and then 
this, an exclamation point on a great day for the defense. Right, and again, just pressure. Now we knew that they had to throw. We talked to our defensive line about coming up, just rushing the quarterback. Great job again, Devin Long, Igor coming in. Uh, you can credit the sack to either one of them. At this point, you're able to just get the ball back and uh, run the clock out, and you do it on the ground. Yeah, uh, nice job. Got a chance to get Jason Fife in the football game, which I think was very important. Uh, and then run the ball. Nice job here. Kenny Washington, Ryan Shaw, we have a whole crew here doing a nice job. Running just straight ahead. Just going to make sure we get positive yardage, keep the ball, keep the clock running. Then you're going to give it to the outside. Ryan Shaw picking up 13 yards. And that is it. Celebrate a Civil War win from that opening win at Mississippi State to the final one against Oregon State. A team coach that never lost heart, had the character to come back and finish winning four of the last five. Ending with a game these players will never forget for the rest of their lives. Yeah, you know, there was a lot of disbelievers that jumped off the bandwagon, but uh, the coaches kept faith in us. We kept faith in ourselves. And uh, we've made big plays when they've had to be made, and we've gotten some good wins down the stretch. I mean, we got one more, we'll get back to work. But they're a good defense, and I don't know if we completely worked them over because they had some big stops, hell to field goals those last couple drives, which was very frustrating for us. Um, but Coach Ludwig put together a great scheme. We executed it pretty well and, and got some points on the board. Man, I get stuff from my family because, you know, they, they're, always, they're always giving me stuff because, you know, they're like, oh, you got a name like Washington, you got to do something. So it's, it's funny, you know, it's about time that I do something. You know, get my name in the paper every now and then so they can get off my back a little bit. It's a lot of heart, a lot, lot, lot of heart this year. A lot, big change from last year, you know, everybody pulled together, you know, in, in close games, you know, everybody just, nobody gives up, you know, so we just, we just stuck with it, and it's, it's a good feeling to be around people who just keep fighting, you know. I, we're just all really excited, especially we're all playing for Dan and Joe, I mean, the seniors, uh, and we had a couple of Oregon guys, me, me and Robin out there, and it just, it makes it that much better, you know, playing against your in-state rival and everything like that, so... We, we want to do it for the seniors because going out with a win against Oregon State makes just makes everything that much better. You know, we focused all week on not not our emotions get out of control, and uh, I really believe that uh, me not talking to the media really helped. And uh, I think uh, with us respecting them and giving them all the praise and their, and them dogging us, uh, I really believe. That made us play at a higher potential today. I mean, credit to the coaches with the scheme, first of all. And then just us being focused in practice. That's where it started. A lot of people don't, a lot of people realize, I mean, it's just in the game. But I mean, we to start that practice from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Being focused, uh, keying in on what we need to key on, uh, and, and just playing duck football. And, uh, and we got more comfortable as the year went on, and, and here you have us. You had to come back strong, man, and make a statement, man. It always says a lot for your team, and, and we've been a lot, a lot of ups and downs this year. And, and for us to finish strong like this, you know, makes a statement about our, our team and how, you know, how poised we are, our character. You know, he's talking a little smack, and uh, I don't think he'll be talking smack anymore. I think uh, we kind of shut his mouth up a little bit there. So, uh, you know, we got the win. You know, they got an L in their column. We got a W, and that's all that really matters, you know. So, you know, we all came back together. Uh, we all bonded once again, and uh, we knew we didn't want to go out like we did last year. And uh, this year we... Uh, you know, we, we regrouped and uh, everyone took it upon themselves to, to become better football players and to be, and dedicate themselves, and uh, we did that. It was really emotional, you know. Um, wipe, wipe, wipe away a couple of tears, uh, say some goodbyes, and, uh, you know, it's uh, it's been a pleasure to play here. It's been fun, and uh, as a senior, and I know for the rest of the seniors, uh, we'll never forget it. And we're going to miss Kevin Mitchell, that's for sure. Uh, how much do you like this team, Coach, for what they went through? Well, I, you know, it's hard to see those kids and, and think of what they've accomplished and, and not talk about not just the turnaround, but just because I think about the term four or five years with these young men and, and this group of kids over this year, because of what occurred last year, I think it's even more important what they accomplished this year because they were faced with the same kind of uh, obstacles and situation and responded in a very positive manner. And I'm, I'm appreciative of what they did because they truly do as much as the coaches can say, do this, do that, but they got to make it happen on the field. And think about the big wins that a lot of these guys played a part in. Texas in the Holiday Bowl, Colorado in the Fiesta Bowl. They beat Michigan this year, ending with a Civil War. They won some big games. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean they did a great job. It fires me up. And, again, you can talk about those. You can talk about some of the low points, too. And I think to overcome the low points and come back from those may be the most important thing. Well, we'll talk about the high points okay. tonight. I agree. Celebration Sunday. Congrats, Coats, again. Uh, uh, you turned things around this year. It was a determined team when everyone doubted. They believed. They said it wasn't last year's team. No one believed them when they said it wasn't last year's team. And you know what? It wasn't last year's team. They went through highs and lows. Injuries, Coach, yeah. deaths and family. Lots yeah. of different things happened. 
No, it was amazing. I think when you think about that, we had four or five kids who had lose, lost either grandparents or mothers or fathers this year. And, and uh, the nice thing was the entire team felt that and responded to those kids' needs. And the injury thing is tough, too, when you have some seniors that don't even get to play their last year. Those kids have been there and came to practice every day. And I think them being around helped make the other kids aware of the opportunity that they had. And they certainly deserve this moment after one of the great turnarounds in Oregon history. Okay. Four weeks ago, listen, guys. I'm not sure anybody understood or believed what we did, that we could be a great football, not a good football team, but a great football team. And you put three great wins together to make this thing finish off, put us in a position now to go to the best bowl game possible. Anywhere we go, though, same challenge is thrown down to us. That was a great job today. Defense, unbelievable job getting those turnovers at the end. Offense getting four scores in the second half, three drives, that's awesome. Yeah. Special teams, unbelievable. Kickoff return, unbelievable. Welcome back, everyone. Having so much fun, running a little bit out of time, but uh, what the heck. Big celebration Sunday today with the Civil War win. Next game, boy, could be anybody. Looks like it's going to be the Sun Bowl. Minnesota looks to be the number one team for the Sun Bowl coach, but they've said, the Sun Bowl told us, they don't want that rematch, but they might fall there anyway. So it could be Minnesota, Iowa, Michigan State. Wisconsin, any of those teams? Every one of those are great football teams. We've played many of those programs before and had tremendous games and tremendous battles with them. We look forward to whoever we get the opportunity to play. And we'll probably find more about uh, this later. If Ohio State goes to a BCS game, it'll all change everything, and we'll figure it out, and we'll wrap it up on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti for this season when we return here in the studio. Well, Coach, a great year. Unfortunately, we have to wrap it up in 32 seconds. And the whole season in 32, that's a great year. It is a great year. Great kids, great group of kids who battled back, had some tremendous highs, beat Michigan, and then fell off the bandwagon a little bit, came back, and finished strong, beat the Beavers, great Civil War. And we'll get to talk about it all the way up to the bowl game. We'll see you again, of course, and get a chance to talk. And Monday night, don't forget, tomorrow night, the player feature with Kevin Mitchell. You do not want to miss it. Coach, congratulations on a thank great you. year. Thank Thanks you. for joining us all year long. Awesome. And, folks, thank you for watching all season long. We'll see you next year.